this is Eric Mwade with Mwade.com and I just wanted to uh, give a, another video here um, uh, giving a, de um, a description of and uh, having a discussion on what makes stocks move uh, in, a, in, in any given market situation um, because there's so many when you come into the market and you're bombarded with all this information um, there's so many stocks to pick from so many sectors if, in fact um, so many markets uh, you have commodities you have um, you know uh, currency then you have stocks and stocks are divided into ETFs and ETFs are divided into all sorts of in other words it's a very confusing mess and um, it's over overwhelming um, what I want to discuss here at the beginning of this video is um, just taking a look at a stock here travel zoo um, which is up about three dollars don't know that you can see that. Let me try and see that I can get that. It's right here. This is uh, before the market close. This is um, April the 5th, 2011. Uh, right there is a date. But um, market's about to close. But what I'm talking about here is um, why is the stock up $4? Now I want to pull up the travel zoo um, chart so we can appreciate. Um, what those four dollars mean and why is it that some stocks do great when others struggle now you see whether I can pull up travel zoo from my the charts I have on the public here it is here it is now this is travel zoo from a monthly view why is this stock up three dollars today but more importantly why is the stock up from about forty seven dollars it's now trading at $80 in under three weeks, I mean, let's say about a month. I mean, that's a huge gain. You're talking about very close to a double in shortest time possible. And remember, stocks trading at $80. And as early as mid-2010, um, stock was trading under 15 I mean, about $13. So $13 to $80 in about one, less than a year. But more importantly, why did I personally think the stock was a buy when it moved above forty-seven dollars? Now, I don't know what the, I don't. I mean, I have an idea because I know the stock from years gone by, um, but I don't necessarily know what the earnings are for the stock. I don't care. I don't know, uh, you know, what the rationale for the stock moving up is. I don't know who's buying it. I don't know how much they are buying. I, don't care about the volume but something about this stock picked my interest when it moved above $47 and what I'm trying to say is that once you understand the simple things that make stocks move you might you'll find a way to um, push away all the conflicting information out there all you need to do is understand a few things that make stocks move and try and own stocks that are doing similar type of actions now um, and this was a, a Mwade.com pick, uh, I think was even a, let me see whether I can pull this up. So bear with me for a second because this is just being made on the fly. I think I picked this stock as a buy, Travel Zoo, uh, one among many. What's going on there? Let's try that again. Getting an error on my own website, it's not good. But anyway, um, see whether I can pull that up for you. Uh, while, while that's loading up, why don't you take a look at this? Is Travel Zoo. Let's take a look at Travel Zoo on a weekly chart. What you've been looking at is a monthly. Uh, let's look at it from a weekly chart. And still, even the weekly, when the stock was moving, was breaking out around here, stock was a buy. And here you are buying a stock that's moving to new highs. Why would you want to buy it when it moves above this level here? Um, and in this particular instance, which is a an ideal situation, you know, some breakouts will fail, some will be slow movers. But I'm just showing you that even when it works out, it works out beautifully. The good gain is, um, as you can see here, looked very good even on the weekly chart once you learn the principles that um, Moade.com is all about. Now. I want to show you that I picked this stock here. Let's see whether I can pull that up. Pick the stock here. This is a mother.com homepage. You see a travel zoo was about two weeks ago. I'm 
um, a little bit of a yeah um, on a March 17th is when travels you was selected on the on the as, as a buy so March 17th would bring it somewhere around middle of this March right here so when it was breaking out right about there would be March 17th somewhere in that region so coincide with the buy point when it broke broke out right there so in other words I when I picked the stock didn't know anything about earnings didn't care what products they were selling or services or what the market condition was well I did pay attention to the market condition which is another topic right there but what I'm trying to say is that is that the things that move stocks traditionally are not the things that you're gonna learn in textbooks they're not the things that CNBC talks about they're not the things that Wall Street Journal talks about they're not the things that you're gonna find on Bloomberg the things that move stocks a little bit uh, out of the mainstream understanding and this is what this is this uh, trying to understand how markets move and what stocks to own to be give yourself the biggest possibility of um, of profits and now I'll, I'll continue the video uh, after a little bit of a pause so really in effect what I'm trying to say is that the game changer in your analysis when um, trying to understand what direction to 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 pick stocks and what should be important in in selecting and determining um, what instruments you wanna own in a portfolio, uh, the game changer obviously and it's a it's um odd when you come to that conclusion and realize how effective it is. Uh, the game changer in your thinking is when you push everything out, um, you push away um, pre market trading. Uh, you know, scratch that from your uh, playbook. Uh, if you um, ignore what anybody is saying about the stock market, take that. Okay, I'm back. I apologize for that phone call during taping of the video. Um, let's go back and look, take a look at a stock I had as a stock pick. Um, I think the beginning of uh, December 2010, and this is PPO. And if I can click on that, see whether we can get. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember what the price on the stock was, see what, whether that pulls up. Okay, uh, it's taking its time, that's all right. I just want to see what this chart looked like. Uh, the stock was trading at $33. Stock was trading at about, yeah, 33 The breakout was 33.24, the first week of December 2010. And that's what the chart looked like was a, a premium uh, was a free pick uh, on the YouTube channel uh, that I have uh, twice a week but this is what the chart looked like now remember the stock had just moved from about 09 the lows were about 250 two dollars and fifty cents can if, if you can believe that can you believe that two dollars fifty cents let me show you that somewhere here was trading around three dollars for months here between October of 08 and March 09 and uh, as of December 2010 barely about a year and a half later stock was trading at thirty three dollars I mean that's a what one thousand percent gain absolutely now nobody would want to buy a stock at that price I mean stocks been up big big chunk of, of, of a gain here at this level uh, but and let me let me show you that so the breakout point was 33.24 but what I want to show you is not necessarily what happened at the time but what happened after the fact um, I remember probably spent a couple of minutes if that figuring out whether the stock was a buy or not at the time in December of 2010 um, Remember 2010 December stock was trading here about 33 and it's since moved to as high as 64 give or take and in about one two in about let me see that one in about two and a half months it added on another uh, close to 90% gain um, didn't take a lot of reasoning like I said it's all part of the ultimate more the breakout which is part of the my secrets upgrade part of the mentorship program um, basically what I'm trying to say is that 
you can you can make your work complicated and that's okay or you can simplify it and make it powerful the more you um, remove the noise the more you come to the to the to the core aspects of a stock's movement uh, the better your chances of uh, making uh, great picks now not all picks do great let me show you two that just Im immediately come to mind at this present time there's one here that was a premium was a more the breakout stock was supposed to have been breaking out above this is a weekly chart above seven dollars so say somewhere this breakout here when it moved right here this move here was a buy stocks been down since then a whole bunch so you've been stopped out um, but needless to say that didn't work out if I go back and look at what the see what stock is still one that I'm watching because this is this is also the other aspect of uh, of picking stocks is you'll notice you'll notice eventually that um, some stocks struggle to break out it's just they have a hard time they labor before they register a, a solid breakout but eventually they do and and you don't want to give up on a stock just because of a a, a, a bad breakout you, you, you still have to keep tabs on it because that which you are ignoring might turn out might turn out to be one of the biggest movers in the market um, so don't don't let a fail breakout necessarily uh, dis, uh, discourage you because even in this particular instant the reason why I am particularly still interested in the stock in the future is see this this is the highest weekly monthly closing high now we look at a monthly chart and at some point the stock is is gonna break out um, and I when, whenever it breaks out I want us to be biased because first and foremost we have to recognize right now in the marketplace uh, about for many months going back to 2010 um, and right now about a fourth month of, of uh, 2011 commodities have been on fire and this being a commodity stock it's a palladium play right there uh, I don't want to give up on it now you'll also notice that on the monthly chart it looks the chart is cleaner in other words the stock even though it failed to break out above this line here it's still in that range and in the future it will not surprise me if we see it move up that line struggle a little bit and eventually uh, see much 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 uh, highs uh, higher prices and it's just because um, get that off it's just because if you if you um, look at the RSI and the MACDs they are all close to three year highs the RSI which is this relative strength index is about to make a three year high and the MACD settings two of them uh, this one and this one and don't worry about it if you haven't gone deep into the my into the my secrets information or the mentorship program but um, what I'm trying to say is that the stock still meets the minimum requirements for great winners like the ones I showed you uh, for travel zoo and PPO now let me show you one that has also struggled and this is a this is one that should have done well the reason why I say that is gold has been again one of the leading sectors in the market very resilient gold is at a new all-time high right now um, but this stock has struggled and I've had it as a buy multiple occasions on this breakout here which failed then again I thought it was breaking out around here but it failed I'm still looking out for the stock to break out and I'm you I'm gonna use the this is a weekly chart but I like I like to use the monthly charts because the monthly charts will tend, tend to have lower um, buy points in other words uh, for example this one you see the stock the buy point is about actually I think it's 1434 so the buy point is this highest closing high that's where the stock needs to move above so you can buy it the reasoning for that is just like in this particular example when the stock moves out in this above this level here this closing monthly closing level here this right here was a buy signal and why would anybody want to buy a stock when it's making a new high it's a question I get all the time. 
and I think years ago about 10, 10 12 years when I started looking at breakouts and considering them as a buying strategy um, it, it took some, a little it took a little bit of convincing it's not the easiest thing to do to accept that it is there is it is one of the many strategies out there in fact I would I would say there are as many strategies as there are traders. Um, there's no shortage of strategies. Everybody's got their own. Um, bottom line is, it, it's, if it, something works for you, it works for you, and that's there's no limit to what strategy you can tweak. Anything you can tweak, what I'm talking about, you can change it. Um, the bottom line here is the reason why stocks that are breaking out to new highs work is not that complicated and the best way I can explain it is when the stock breaks out here right here when it makes this high above oh let's say above 870 it moves to about 890 it's making a new 52 week high why would anybody want to buy it but here's a reasoning and it really makes a lot of sense if you think about it Number one, the stock is proving that it can it can move. Just that by itself should be good enough. The stock is making new highs. It's breaking previous resistance levels. And a resistance level is a level where it had traded before and has been finding difficulty moving above. Um, just like in this particular example, this blue line here, you can see the stock has failed to move above this blue line here, here, here here almost four months or five months where the stock has not been able to close above the blue line that's a resistance level and resistance level are real even though they are kind of imaginary we just kind of make them up they are real in other words if a stock is gonna if if you are going on a on a long journey let's say from the uh, you know from New York or from let's say from LA all the way to New York all right and you had never gone past, uh, you know, past Las Vegas. So that Las Vegas is right there. And that's the, the farthest you've ever gone, you know, from West Coast to the East Coast. Now, if if somebody was gonna bet that you were gonna that you you were gonna go to the to New York, wouldn't you think that they would wanna place a bet the moment you you went past Las Vegas? In other words, if a stock is gonna is if if a stock's been trading in a certain range, you know, and the stock is gonna one day at some point in the future trade twice its normal trading range, then it has first and foremost it's clear this level it has to break out. The only way a stock is gonna demonstrate that it's gonna do something unusual is by breaking a range breaking out of a range and saying okay I'm done trading uh, in the I'm tried I'm tired of trading in this area and I would like to trade closer to the teens so the first thing you gotta do is break that price you the first thing you gotta do is break this level break out you that's how you know the stock has potential so breakouts work with that kind of thinking that um, you you had you had done so much you had you you probably let's say you had a record of producing x amount of widgets you know um uh, you know you had you had a record as a company of producing x amount of widgets but you now got a big order from us from a from a new uh, customer and now you're making x plus one widgets right which means is there's something changing in the in your company, and I would I would you you want to make a bet that this increase in production might suggest there's a new order, and a new order means more business, means more profits, and things like that. You know what I mean? So breaking out of a range, uh, even with that kind of explanation, is pretty much. Uh, but also there's an underlying reason why you want to buy stocks that are breaking out to new highs. And it's something called overhead supply. Uh, overhead supply. I don't want to write that down, but it's overhead supply. Okay. And the reasoning is this: Let's say you are most people are trained to buy stocks on the way. Change that. 
most people are trained to buy stocks after they've gone down so most people want to buy stocks somewhere around here buy low sell high now that mantra is uh, philosophically correct because if you if you are correct in your in your timing you make money all right if you buy low and then you sell it high you, you're always gonna make money but that's the theory or, or the mantra it's it's harder in reality than um, and you and we all know that if you've been trading for more than a couple of days you know it's very difficult to pick uh, the a stock slow needless to say most people are trained and are always looking out for stocks that are at a discount now I was talking about overhead supply the reason why a stock that is trading at a discount from its uh, trading range in other words a stock that has been sold off that uh, uh, the market does not favor the market is uh, selling hard for whatever reason doesn't matter um, the reason why stock, those stocks struggle to make you money is not that complicated you can explain it by this phenomenon called the overhead supply and what that is is now let's say like for, for instance this stock here was trading somewhere here um, and that's probably the about between eight and seven dollars right this area here and the stock sells off so here you are you you're like man I can't believe this stock is now trading under under a dollar all right now given your time frame it's really up to you in this particular instance it might not be a good example because if you bought the stock here if you are lucky buying under dollar stocks trading at fourteen dollars you made fourteen times uh, your investment but in extra in trying to explain the overhead supply what the overhead supply is and this is a real phenomena and if you think about it you've also been caught doing the same thing all these people who bought this stock here once they see this stock go down so they are losing money I mean they are losing money at uh, a chunks at a time so they are really in the red and what happens the reason why stocks struggle and you'll see this stock forget about the price you'll see that the stock labored it moved up but it took almost a year just to move a, a dollar two dollar in a two dollar range notice how much my, how much time the stock took to move from let's say around here to this breakout level here right it's a tight range the reason is that overhead supply means that anybody who bought the stock at a higher price will, will always be selling every time the stock moves closer to their buy point so that they can get out as even as possible or with as lower with a smaller a loss as possible so every time the stock moves up a little bit people are selling into strength they'll keep selling and selling until they feel that they have gotten out either even or with a smaller loss as possible and this selling pressure is the reason why stocks that have been sold off don't come back to str come back immediately they struggle because people are selling them there's a lot of selling pressure now on the other hand on the flip side when a stock breaks out like it did right here now think about it anybody who bought this stock between November of 2008 and and September of 2010 it's almost two years I mean it's a long period of time here anybody who, st who bought the stock here at the time of making a new 52 week high it's important to understand this everybody's making money right at the time the stock moves here everybody who bought the stock and still owns the stock at this point at this particular point right here new highs everybody is making money pretty much uh, apart from the guy who just bought the stock and moved push the stocks to new high right everybody's making money and what that means is that there are no sellers stock has no has no roof it has no range anymore it can do anything it wants and there there's an absence of natural sellers and that's why 
breakouts work breakout work because you are buying a stock that has the highest possibility of having as fewer amount of sellers as possible so it works so if you ever wonder why people buy stocks making new highs it's because it's just like an auction if you go to an auction and and there's one piece of item that the price just keeps going up and up and it doesn't seem to have a roof on it whatever item that is being pushed to at the auction that has such a high demand that might have a higher resale value or there might be some something about it that uh, demands that de that that is a uh, drawing buyers and uh, and uh, and demanding that they pay a higher price in other words there has to be a demand for it why is something on auction being uh, sold at an in and and seemingly no roof as opposed to another item in the auction that nobody wants to buy okay it's the same thing a stock that is making a new high is telling you just like the auction there is something about this instrument about this stock about this ETF or about this currency or about this index that has totally changed and it's a it's a good thing just like on the opposite side when a stock makes a new 52 week low you want to avoid the stock because a new 52 week low means the stock is just the worst it's been in a year in 52 weeks so why would you want to buy something that just became the worst in in a year in other words when you buy a stock that's making a new high you are buying a stock that is at its best behavior at its strongest technical strength in the in a year and so even though initially when you come into this kind of philosophy you're you're not sure but you'll notice time and time again these are the stocks that are leading the market the stocks that are breaking out they break out the demand is high volume expands and why does volume expands because pretty much the market is playing breakouts and that's the game that this game has been going on since the 80s it's not a new game and the principles have not changed what has changed a uh, little bit is behavior I mean stocks struggle to break out there's a lot lots of false breakouts lots of um, attempted breakout you know it's, it's it gets confusing that's why you have to um, sometimes when a stock tries to break out a second or third time don't ignore it because maybe the first two were intended to uh, frustrate disappoint uh, discourage uh, market traders from playing the idea because usually um, a stock that is going to gain a hundred percent two hundred percent has to break out for the most part and sometimes the institutions want you to be uh, looking the other way so they'll move the stock to a buy point sell it off they are the ones selling it off just because they want to shake you out because they want you to buy the stock they want to sell the stock to you at a higher price so what I say is if you like a stock and it breaks out and fails you get stopped out you can keep watching it um, and try it some other time sometimes the mantra is failed breakouts become the best breakouts or shakeouts lead into powerful breakouts shakeouts which means false false breakout lead into powerful breakout what I mean by that is let's say a stock needs to break out above this level and you find that there will be multiple attempts tries to break out fails tries to break out has a hard sell off shake out so all these points here this point and these points are shake out and eventually you might find the stock breaking out and it happens a lot I've seen it I mean I've seen it so many times it's it's amazing how this works and it it, it can get you out of a stock it, it's so frustrating sometimes you see a good stock you buy it nothing happens you lose money try it again lose money and you get frustrated you say ah, I'm moving on man I, I'm never gonna track this stock again and the next time you come across the stock it's three times where you bought it it's 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 unbelievable but that's the nature of the game understand that there are institutions out there that know exactly where the stock is going they know exactly where the stock is going how they know is a topic is, a, is, is, is another long topic Either they know because they're going to be manipulating the price either they know because they know whatever it doesn't matter but the bottom line is there are people out there who know exactly where a stock is going and their job sometimes and if not all the time is to make sure the little guy you and I 
don't get a piece of that cake. And that's why they'll frustrate breakouts because they know if a stock is going to break out and, and, and record great gains, um, it has to break out and they don't want you to be part of it. So, and they know you're watching. So they are going to try as much as they can to shake you out. And that's why I say be, be, uh, in fact, I've, over the years I've developed a like or an interest in stocks that fail to break out because I know that somebody knows something, they don't want us to be part of it and they're going to keep frustrating us. And at some point this breakout is going to be the best idea you ever owned. So do not throw away failed breakouts. Don't be frustrated. Don't let that creep into your psychology. Uh, understand that sometimes they have to shake you out before they register good gains. Now, um, or as I gonna see it now. So the other thing I was gonna say is um, just this is kind of like an introduction, kind of um, for the mentorship, my secrets. Um, before we go into details, and um, the thing is this: is you'll notice everything you want to understand about a stock is in a, is in the chart. That's why charts are very important because charts represent the daily closing. If you're looking at a monthly chart then the monthly chart is based on the monthly closing levels for the stock. If it's a daily chart, it's a daily closing level for the stock. If it's a weekly chart, then it's the chart is basically uh, dependent on the weekly closing. And what that tells you is that there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of intraday volatility, intra-month volatility, um, intra-week volatility, a lot of volatility. And you just have to push those things away. In fact, there's no point to look at the futures markets because that. The, here's the thing. The closer you follow your stock day to day, minute by minute, day by day, the worse you're going to, the worse decisions you're going to make. Because you're going to get into the psychology of the stock and you're going to be selling the stock very early um, because the psychology of a stock, understand this. If you look back and look at a stock you made a lot of money on, you can't explain how that stock moved. It's very, it's almost an impossibility. How a stock, how a stock or a market moves from one point to another, even though you watch it every minute, is hard to understand. In fact, you can't understand it. In one minute, the stock is trading here, or the Dow is trading here, and then it sells off, or it's at a new high. Before you know it, two weeks later, you're looking at a different price. How that happened, hard to explain. You can't explain it, even though you are watching it minute by minute. So this is what I, I encourage you. If you want to make money in the stock market as much as possible, try and not watch your stocks day to day, minute by minute. Just let them do their thing. In fact, if you are not in the red, if your stock is above where you bought it, I would encourage you not even to look at it. Just let it be. Because if you watch it minute by minute, there are going to be moments when the stock is going to drop intraday for no reason on heavy volume and you're just going to feel sick to your stomach and you want to sell it. And there's going to be periods when the stock is going to have a short a spike and you're going to think that's the high. You see, you understand, you have to understand that most of the charts that I use are monthly and weekly charts, which means this thing is going to develop over many weeks or over many months. If you are looking at a daily chart, then your your uh, analysis should be days into the future. If you, are if you are using a weekly chart to make a determination, then your analysis should be for what could happen weeks into the future. If you are using a monthly chart, then you are trying to read into what could happen to the stock months into the future which means months means many minutes many seconds many days many weeks and you have to let that play out you have to let it play out otherwise you're going to be frustrating you okay there's nothing you're going to gain from watching a stock tick for tick nothing other than bad decisions you just gotta you just gotta ignore that stuff just don't look at it don't look at it you own the stock and if it's not losing you money let it be you might sell it four months down the road, six months down the road, two years down the road. And if you, you'll notice that any stock that has a great looking chart, any stock that made anybody money, it happened over many months. And in fact, the ones that made the most amount of money, it took years to develop. Okay? Just understand that. It's just how it is. You, you, 
you can't you, you can't you can't demand that this, the market pay you in two days it happens once in a while once in a long time you buy a stock and within two days the stock is bought by somebody else or the stock spikes I mean it's happened to me probably once in what 10 years that a stock doubled overnight you know and that was crazy but anyway it's a long story what I'm trying to say is that don't feel like you're missing out when you see stocks that are moving intraday. Every day you're going to find stocks that are the highest percentage gainers. You can't own them. Just ignore them. What you own might be good enough. Okay? Just let it, as long as you're not losing money. If, if the stock is, if you're upside down on a stock, then I might, I might say then that's probably a bad idea. You want to sell it as much, as a, the earliest opportunity possible because losing money is one thing. But if your stock is making you money, don't watch it. Let it be. Let me take that. So anyway, what I was trying to say uh, before that phone call. Too many phone calls. Hey, I'm in demand. But what I was, what I was trying to say is that everything you want is in, is in the chart. And what you're looking at is unbiased. The chart is unbiased. It doesn't matter. The chart doesn't care uh, how you interpret it. It's just data. All it is is just data that has been put in a format that is a visual format. Um, and to me, I would like to be unbiased when I'm making decisions. So um, I don't want to listen to anybody's opinion. I don't subscribe to anybody's opinion. Don't care. And well, I mean, not not. You know, the thing is. If they have a dollar to buy a stock and I have a dollar, I mean, we all have the same buying power. So uh, if they have an opinion, I have an opinion. Everybody has an opinion. So I don't see, I don't see why people invest too much effort in trying to listen to 20, 20 analysts. And usually those analysts are in different directions, so they cancel each other out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so really to be very honest what I'm trying to say is I don't think anybody's opinion is, is important all you have to do is figure out how you can have you can give power to your own opinions in other words you need to figure out what it is that gives you um, some kind of edge and use that it doesn't matter what anybody else says in fact it doesn't matter because at the end of the day it's your money it's your it's your investment it's your returns it's your it's it's you and they might be doing they might be they might have an opinion you know in the media on tv or, or on a blog whatever on a newspaper article or it doesn't matter or you or your broker whoever it is at the end of the day you should be looking out for you and you should train you to where that every whenever you, you make a decision you make a decision based on something that is unbiased in other words if you say okay I bought a stock and I'm down 10% I'm selling it you sell it period you don't need no opinion nobody needs to you don't need to confer with anybody there is no discussion if you made a decision prior to buying the stock that 10% means I was wrong I'm getting out you get out period okay um, but what I'm trying to say, you need to train your eyes. You need to train your eyes and your instincts to look at unbiased view of the market. And that's a stock chart. A stock chart is unbiased. It's just data. Uh, stock's trading at $10. It's trading at $10. It's trading at $10. Why? Because of everything. The manipulation, the earnings, the future market uh, environment. I, everything is in the stock. Whatever stock. And this is why technical analysis to me has an edge over fundamental analysis. And you'll never hear me talking about fundamental analysis because I don't care, it don't matter to me. At the end of the day, some people are successful using it and that's good for them. For me, um, it, it, it's all in the chat. As a, as a stock analyst who's using chats, you have to, you just have to convince yourself. And in, in the beginning, it's, it's, it's harder. After you've done it for years, it's, 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 not, it's not a question. But... When you're looking at a stock from a technical aspect, which is the chart view, is you have to conclude that everything that could possibly be in this move the stock is already priced in. So if a stock is trading at again ten dollars, everything 
this. It's trading at ten dollars because that's where the market is valuing it, and so that includes everything, including the things you don't know about, right? Because the other thing about fundamental analysis is you are trying to use all the data that's out there in the public and get an edge, but you have to understand there are things about the stock you don't know, contracts that have yet to be signed, uh, deals, or um, heck, the other thing you have to also consider is this is very important. I, I might spend a minute on this. Is is you have to understand, and this is a lot of people spend a lot of time looking for great stocks. I mean, they spend a lot of time, but it's very important you understand about 75 percent. This is a big number, and please pay attention to this because 75 percent of a stock's movement, 75 percent, is based on the market direction. It doesn't matter what this. For example, even in this particular example, this stock was go going down because the market was in a bear market from about eight dollars to one dollar. Why? Because the market was in a bear market in 2009. It's just how it is, and the market made a low here about March, about uh, March uh, 6th, 2009, somewhere around here, right? And the stock's been up since then. The market's been up since then. So what I'm trying to say, it's a fact. 75% of a stock's movement is based on the market direction. So instead of spending 75% of your time looking for the great stock, spend 75% of your time figuring out where the market is going, my friend. If you can figure out where the market is going, it becomes easier. Not easy, easier for you to make money. So understand that even though in trying to understand the secrets to why stocks move, the secret is not in the stock's movement. The secret is in the market's movement. 75% of the stocks you own are just going to be reflecting what the market is doing. Period. And so, it stands to reason that the most important thing in your analysis is not the stock. is not what you own in your portfolio. That is secondary. The most important thing is market direction. Friends, that is the most important thing. And it is also the hardest thing to consider because you don't know where the market is going. And I'll bet you 90, 90 plus, let me just say most of us can never know where the market is going. A few people do know because they are the ones who take the market where it needs to go. That's my belief. They know where the market needs to go and they'll push it there irrespective of the news. It doesn't matter whether there's a World War 10 and they want the market to make a new high. The market will make a new high. That's why it never makes any sense the way the market trades. One minute it's trading, they tell you the market is trading because of uh, Middle East crisis. And the next minute, you know, the market is selling off because of Middle, Middle East crisis. And the next day, there's even a bigger uh, occurrence or a bigger situ uh, war situation in another, prob probably even multiple places now. <laughs> but the market makes a new high in your face. Why? Because they, they the market needs to go somewhere by a certain date. Remember, price and date, they already know where the market is going to be trading at what date. And so when things don't make sense to us traders, it's because we don't know where the market needs to go, but they do know. Okay? A few people don't know where the market is going. So what I'm trying to say, 75% of a stock's movement is based on what? Market direction. So you don't have to be a genius stock picker, or you have to be, be a genius market sense of direction you don't have to get it perfectly correct but sense it if the market's been moving higher that's good for you that's all you need to know play the long side that's it. you know what i'm saying now 75 percent is based on stock there on market direction 15 i would even like to say 15 to 20 percent of a stock's movement is made based on the sector or see what I'm saying? 75% is market direction, and the other 15 to 20% of a stock's movement is going to be based on what the sector is doing. Simple as that. If the sector is doing great, stock's going to do okay. If the sector is selling off, hey, stock's going to sell off. Whatever you do, it doesn't matter how good of a stock picker you are. So, what I'm saying is, 
you need to reverse how you pick your stocks spend as little time on the stocks little time on the stocks a little bit more time on the sectors and spend a whole amount of time trying to figure out where the market is going and it's not easy all right also you never want to buy or you can buy what you want but i'm saying also for success you really have to really have to insist that you buy the best sectors in the market you want to buy the best gainers in the market the best gaining sectors over the last three months for example you want to buy those sectors um, you want to buy the top 10 performing sectors the last three months or the last month if you put your money in sectors that are already doing well like i say 15 percent of the stocks movement is going to come from the sector and the reason why that is the case is if the best sectors attract the smart money so-called smart money that's where the traders are looking at they don't look at weak sectors everybody wants to make money now so what they do is they put money in things that are working now and understand this um, gold has been hot since 2003 now what does that mean that means a hot sector can stay hot for months for weeks for days for years so don't, just because a sector has been good to you for the last let's say three months doesn't mean that you should throw it away because oh nothing moves up for three months more than three months or four months it doesn't matter what i'm trying to say is that if a stock is breaking out in a sector that was already hot that's all you need to know okay how long the, uh, a sector or market is gonna move who knows come on let's be honest we don't know that okay you have to understand markets can turn from being bearish to bullish from bullish to bearish and it, the duration is unknown um, um, Apple was a, I remember when Apple uh, was breaking out about 2002 2003 and stocks been up uh, take a look at it Just show you that a great stock can move for days for weeks for months for years Let's take a look at this one here and remember these are ideal situations all right um, this is Apple it's trading about 340 now but I want us to look at uh, let's look at a 20 20 year monthly chart and so I explain to you what I'm trying to say here okay I mean it's an unbelievable chart right here now first breakout that we had for that mother.com had for Apple computers was when it broke out above that range um, I would say so you know what let, let, let me take that off try it a different way I think we were playing more that I break out and it was a buy somewhere here in 2003 somewhere here and it's been up that much I mean I don't even know what the percentage would be it's just unbelievable so what I'm saying is a great stock can run for years this has this, this one has been running almost for um uh, what nine right is that right eight years eight years my friend i mean it's lost people money like it did during the bear market i mean it does lose it does pull back but remember nothing is going to make you a great return unless you give it the time it needs I'm not saying you buy some of the small cap stocks you know I mean look the selling portion of, of, of when to sell is the hardest thing I have to tell you sometimes you have to sell immediately it's it's an unknown because you don't know tomorrow um, the, the very stock that is up 20% might be at the highs and you and and it's not easy selling is not easy because you could you could sell a stock thinking it's done with its move only to see it couple of months later and it's up another 50 100 200 percent uh, but what I do know for a fact is um, we also have to consider and this is also another important aspect of trading is we 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 tend to do things like what for example if you go to the store to buy to do grocery shopping you know you, you try and do all your shopping at once you know you buy everything you need on the on your list at once and and wh why would why wouldn't you want to do that you don't want to get home and realize you don't have you know an ingredient you need to make supper so we all have a tendency to we've been trained to buy things at once you know 
but the stock market is really odd and for you to be successful is you have to start trading in, in portions or in portions what do I mean by that is if you bought if you bought for example a hundred shares if you bought a hundred shares first and foremost you don't even have to buy the hundred shares at once well somebody will say the commissions are gonna go higher if the more you trade true but what I'm trying to say you don't have to but we've, we've trained ourselves to because daily life dictates we buy things at once you know uh, for the most part but you can split this you can buy this in two portions for example you can buy 50 shares and try and see whether you can get a better price for the next 50 or you can buy you can split the buys in three you know but what I'm trying to say is that when trying to get out of this hundred shares which you own you can sell when the stock when you wake up one morning and the stock is up 20 percent whatever you can sell 25 shares and lock on that profit and you can keep selling it portions of it as the stock gives you returns in other words you don't have to sell you don't have to trade in in bulk you have the, you, if you really want to do it correctly you're going to have to start understanding that from time to time you can take a few uh, of you you can sell a few of your shares just to lock on profit that way you you, you give you, you don't leave uh, what whatever gains you have at the moment uh, you don't let them all ev disappear and ev evaporate so just remember if you own X amount of shares X amount of shares uh, at the time of selling you don't have to sh sell all of them at once try and sell them in portions right um, just try and try and do that well wherever possible because selling in bulk means it's, it's an arrogant statement if you sell everything at once you're being arrogant you're saying I know I know exactly this is the right time to sell I know that I can be wrong but you have to understand you don't know about tomorrow about the next minute you don't know you might sell the stock right there and there might be a buyer coming out of nowhere a big institution that just buys up everything moves up the stock another dollar two dollars five percent three percent ten percent you don't know that and you need to respect that always respect that you don't know nothing in fact the more you understand you know nothing the better trader you become it's the people who think they know that make the biggest mistakes so what I'm trying to say is that try and sell in portions try as much as you can if you see yourself sell, tra selling in portions then you understand that you you've you've um, you've upgraded your game you've advanced your thinking because that is a shows that you respect the market and it also respect shows that you understand that that the gains you have are worth something so if you're making money and you just get the sense the intuition I need to sell something sell something one share two shares 50 shares it doesn't matter but sell something lock onto that profit and move that money to the next fresh idea okay um, let me see Let's see whether you know I'm running out is um, yeah guess the main thing was just kind of give a brief um, talk uh, summary there's so much to cover in the market again somebody can talk for days but the bottom line is you have to simplify you have to simplify this video also and it's simply and to simplify this video is really um, you can combine the fundamental analysis that you that some people can't buy a stock until they understand the he company headquarters what they or the company produces what services how much a CEO makes price to earnings uh, price to sales return on equity uh, all these good terminologies uh, that's fine if that makes you happy do your thing but everything you want to know about the stock is in the chart and the chart takes about once you learn how to read a chart it takes you um, a second to make a decision so it simplifies your work okay um, to summarize bottom line is the simple principles that can force somebody um, buy a stock or look at a stock and the stock make uh, uh, have a good return in the shortest amount of time possible they are very the principles are very simple and my question I guess the point of the video is why bother with all the other stuff when all you need to do is learn how to do it the learning portion of it might be uh, might be might be tough 
you might have to struggle with some some things before you understand them but once you understand them it's 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 good you're good to go you're good to go for life now unless things change down years down the road but i've been using the same principles for almost a decade and they just keep producing so once you know them challenge yourself once you know them it takes up honestly i can teach that to my kid it's they're not that simple because it's a simple thing and it's the ultimate more the breakout once you master that and then the other little things just like when to sell and and stuff like that which is secondary you're good to go now i know the video has been long uh hope you didn't watch all of it in one go because you'd be you'd be tired of listening to this uh, voice but i hope things work out for you uh this is eric mother the mother.com as always i keep on making these videos as we go along so we can try and understand more of this market peace and blessings